So shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And today let's go to range and shoot the 44 Magnum, 44 Special, and 44 Russian with the same load of powder and same bullet and see what the different bullet jumps do to the accuracy and performance of our ammo. So that we're going to see if the bullet jump controversy, uh, we can just shed some light upon that. Let's go to the range. First we'll shoot the 44 Magnum case, then the 44 Special case, then the 44 Russian case. So here's the 44 Magnum case. The 44 special yeah, case gets its turn. Now the 44 right their turn. What's happening is that the targets on both sides of the, of the lane that I'm shooting on, which is I'm shooting on the middle one at 25 yards, the bullets are actually crossing over and hitting my target uh, because of the extra bullseyes that are on the edges of the lane on next to This is extra bullseyes on the lane next to and uh, this is normal though, it happens all the time. So now it's time to repeat all those tests with the revolver. We're going to use the Ruger Super Red Hawk in 44 Magnum and test the bullet jump with this revolver. So first up, the 44 Magnum cases. <laughs> now it's time to shoot the 44 special cases in the Ruger Super Red Hawk. <laughs> so 
So now the 44 Russian in the Ruger Super Red Hawk. So we're back from the range and conclusions. Now, of course, safety is the first issue, and all the brass showed nice, safe pressure signs and good functioning, no excessive recoil, this kind of thing. So all of these rounds were nice and safe and well within the boundaries of good reloaded ammunition. So first, let's show you what the Thompson Center contender turned in with the 44 Russian. And no, that group isn't that distinguished. And all those other bullet holes were fired from the adjoining lanes that were shooting at 12 and a half yards. Our target's posted at 25, so we caught some of their bullets. Anyway, what's distinguished about this is the 44 Russian in the Thompson Center contender got a standard deviation of two with a seven foot per second extreme spread. That's not bad. That's what the 866 feet per second average. Second lowest standard deviation also goes to the 44 Russian in the Thompson Center contender. That's the second five shot group and it got a average of 866 feet per second 13 extreme spread a standard deviation of 5 so the winner in standard deviation was the 44 Russian and that one flyer out there to the right opened that group up there definitely is something to be said about short cases better using and more efficiently using the powder space now the winner in group size was the 44 special I shot a five shot group there, two bullets went in there, three in there, and it shot out of the Thompson Center Contender, 44 Special, a group of .774, and a standard deviation of 12, that's not a bad load. Now the second smallest group shot today was shot out of the Ruger Super Red Hawk at 25 yards, 44 Special and it turned in a .907 with a standard deviation of six. That's a super load for the Super Red Hawk. 907. To be fair to the 44 Magnum, it turned in the third smallest group at 1.192, still over an inch, but not much over. And a standard deviation of 16, that's not a bad load for the Super Red Hawk 44 Magnum. And again, we got 9mm holes in our target. So, shooters and reloaders, here are our conclusions. I'll let you draw conclusions when you see the data. And of course, the project is bullet jump. What effect does bullet jump have on performance and accuracy? So, first of all, we're shooting all at 25 yards, and the, all the powder charges were weighed. And so here's what we got. The Thompson Center Contender, we shot six groups, two each with the 44 Magnum, the 44 Special, and the 44 Russian. And the Thompson Center Contender won the smallest group and also the smallest standard deviation. The 44 Magnum did not really come in in first place with the Thompson Center Contender. And it has the smallest amount of bullet jump. The 44 Russian has the greatest amount. So anyway, now we go to the revolver and that has the flash gap and it has the forcing cone and all that kind of thing. This one, the chamber, is integral to the barrel. So anyway, with the 44 Magnum Special and Russian, we fired two five-shot groups each. And here are the powder charges designed to get the same feet per second. And out of the Ruger Super Red Hawk, the 44 Special won the second smallest group. So, again, the 44 Magnum did not come in 
first place in either the accuracy or the lowest standard deviation. So let's go ahead and draw some conclusions and that is we look at average accuracy. So with the Thompson Center contender we got the 44 Magnum turned in 1.819 inch among the two groups shot with the Thompson Center contender. The 44 Special came in at 1.123 and the 44 Russian blew up a little bit over three inches. Now the Super Red Hawk, the average accuracy of the two groups shot with the 44 Magnum was 1.761, the 44 Special was 1.531, and then the Russian, again, came in over three inches. Not too good. So now let's look at the average standard deviation with the Thompson Center Contender and with the 44 Magnum, of the two five shot groups that we shot, the average standard deviation was 10.5. Not bad. 44 special was 12. The 44 Russian came in at 3.5 average for two five shot groups. That's pretty, uh, that, that's amazing standard deviation. Now the Ruger Super Red Hawk average standard deviation, 44 Magnum came in at 14. The, the, the 44 Special came in at 10.5, and the 44 Russian came in at 10.5. So now we average all the 44 Magnum groups, and you get an average accuracy of both guns and two five-shot groups each, 1.790. And the 44 Special, the average accuracy between the two guns, 1.327, and that was the winner. 44 Russian average accuracy 3.235. The accuracy was not that good. Now, with the standard deviation average, the 44 Magnum came in at 12.25 average standard deviation. The 44 Special came in and the average standard deviation of 11.25 and the 44 Russian came in at seven. And that was the winner of the standard deviation. What that means is if you give the 44 Russian bullets that it likes in the gun that it likes those bullets and that low standard deviation you'll shoot smaller groups so the load was very consistent but the bullet wasn't that accurate in these two guns and that's why the 44 Russian didn't turn in very good accuracy the 44 special turned in the best accuracy and that's probably a good reason why the 44 Special was considered a very good target caliber way back in the 1920s and 30s. This was a very popular target round, and this is why it shot good accuracy. And the Special turned in good standard deviation. That's around 11 is actually fantastic. So between the the average accuracy and average standard deviation, the 44 Special really shined. So it doesn't mean that if you have a little bit of bullet jump, it doesn't mean that, that uh, that's going to be automatically accurate or automatically low standard deviation. A shorter case with, a, with more bullet jump can be very good. Now since this bullet jump issue remains a controversy, I'd like you to look at the 38 Special Wad Cutter. The 38 Special Wad Cutter has the most bullet jump that you'll ever see because of the bullet being right there against the case mouth. And yet, that is the choice of bullseye target shooters before the auto pistols took over. And these are very well known to be able to shoot 1.5 inch groups at 50 yards from a ransom rest. And there was a time that custom gunsmiths tried to use shortened, custom shortened cylinders so that the bullet jump with wad cutters would be reduced to the minimum instead of having all that bullet jump. But those guns failed to win any more than regular guns and in fact maybe did not win as well because if they did win as well or more then we'd all be shooting short cylinders today so that's the final nail in the coffin for this issue I would think
Bye for now.